Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It has been quite a minute since my last video. Um, hopefully you loved my series with Kendra. Thank you to everyone who reached out with all the positive feedback. I'm here with Jackie today to continue our what it's really like to be a woman in tech series. Jackie, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you for being here. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for having me, Michelle. Uh, it's always great, you know, having these kinds of conversations and getting new perspectives and, you know, also just sharing stories. I think it's, it's something that we don't do often enough. So, yeah, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jackie Miller. I am an application architect with Dimension Data, with my core focus being on automation. And I'm also a part-time lecturer at Northwest University doing my PhD, so on and so forth. So, yeah, I mean, I've got quite a few different hats that I wear at different parts of the day. So, yeah, some people say I have multiple uh, personalities, and, and that would be why. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so, do you have any fun facts that you can give us about yourself? Definitely. So uh, I am a huge lover of unicorns, and I think that's probably why I enjoy UiPath so much, because uh, some of the, the first step kind of tutorial uh, things that you would do in UiPath is actually, you know, creating or you know, finding your unicorn name. So I use that as my reference point whenever, whenever anybody asks me, you know, why do you love UiPath? That's it. So a little bit of a spirit animal mapping up to, to who I am. Love that. Um... And for those of you who don't know, I work at UiPath, so this is why this is particularly fun for me. Uh, and Jackie's actually one of our MVPs. Uh, you can always find content on her LinkedIn and, you know, videos about how to use UiPath, tutorials. I mean, she's like an all-star. Thank you. That's very sweet yeah. of you. <laughs> yeah, but you're yeah, so welcome. One of those two. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Uh, so let's get into it. Sweet. Okay. Okay. Um, so just to give everyone context, Jackie and I spoke beforehand, and we want to focus a lot of this video on not only kind of the male versus female dynamic at work, but also the older versus younger dynamic at work. Mm -hmm. So I just want to put that out there. Uh, and with that, we'll start with, do you ever feel like your opinion counts less than that of your older male counterparts at work? Do they talk over you or treat you like you don't know what you're talking about? Yeah, I think that is that is a pretty big one. Um, every single time that I enter a new role, or if there's new team members that come on, or if we're doing some collaboration between different teams, and even in clients' environments, as soon as your your age becomes apparent and, and people look at you and they realize that you're actually a lot younger than them, it's it's a real issue. Um, we've had issues in the past, you know, where, where clients don't really take your opinion seriously and it needs to be validated, validated either by somebody on our side or, or somebody on their side. And, and only when you have certain credentials beyond your name do they actually start taking you seriously. So, I mean, you, you mentioned the UiPath MVP um, accolade, and, and that was a big thing for me this year because suddenly people would, would set up straight and they'd actually listen to what I had to say. So definitely a problem, problem that I face quite often, um, especially in, in new settings. But, you know, it, it takes a hot minute and, and then people are comfortable and then, you know, you've kind of earned your right to say what you want to say and then they start listening to you. So it, it it's one of those processes that takes some time to get used to. Besides the MVP, what do you find has been like a very like useful accolade next to your name that kind of gets people's attention and makes them trust you a little bit more? So I actually didn't believe this until quite a while ago, but having having the, the title PhD or PhD student behind your name actually helps quite a lot. Yeah. So especially in the industry, I mean, I think it's, it's a very controversial conversation at the moment, you know, does masters and, and PhDs and, and further studies actually help you a lot in, in the computer science or in the IT related fields? And a lot of people will tell you that it doesn't. I mean, there's there's some really successful people in our industry who actually don't have any degrees or anything um, yeah. academic related behind their name. And when you get into a conversation with somebody and they ask you, you know, tell me a little bit more about yourself and, and you say, oh, yeah, you know, just, just kind of currently doing my PhD, that kind of stuff. It, it kind of, I don't know, it's like alarm bells that go off in their head. So, I mean... Up until now, you know, people don't really care much until that that comes up. So along with the MVP side, uh, side of things, that that really helps. I, I didn't believe it because um, one of the one of my very good friends, who's who's a deputy director at the, the school that I work for, he always used to say to me, you know, it doesn't it doesn't really matter what you're doing until you have that doctor behind your name, and then people kind of sit up straight when they're talking to you. And I always thought that was the biggest load of rubbish until it actually started happening. <laughs> Interesting. And do you feel like that has to do with you being a female or that's just kind of generally a thing in the industry? 
I think it's a bit of both and, and maybe a little bit with the, with the age aspect as well, because I mean, generally when you're talking to people who are professors or doctors or those, those kinds of things, you know, they have about 10 or 20 years experience behind them. And I think the same goes for solution architecture. Um, it, it's very unheard of that you get somebody under 30 who's actually a solution architect, unless it's a new technology. Yeah. So, I mean, very much the same where, uh, you know, if you're expecting majority males to, to have a PhD or the, the majority of the people to have PhDs uh, to be male. And, and that's actually one of the studies that were released um, at one of the conferences I went to earlier this year, where predominantly a lot of the research output is coming out of males. So I think, you know, what you're saying holds water, not just only because it's a, it's a, it's a young person who, who's striving towards a PhD who's under 30, but, you know, also because if you look at the, the, the history behind it, it, it is actually quite, it is quite something. People pay more attention when you have MBA next to your name. Definitely. Uh, with so PhD. Yeah, yeah, you know, so I, I definitely see it. Um, would you suggest that as a, I guess, a tip uh, for women if they find that they're, you know, struggling kind of to get the attention in the field, would you recommend they do pursue that higher education? I think it depends. I think, you know, depending on what your interests are, if you're somebody who wants to go into leadership and into management, then the MBA route is definitely, it's massive. That helps you a lot. But if you're if you're a technical person and you want people to to kind of you know, be able to reference what you're saying and validate what you're saying, then, then pursuing a master's and a PhD degree really isn't a bad idea. Because there's just something about, you know, when, when somebody puts your name into Google and, and you pop up with all these lovely credentials next to your name, that, that really just gives it something. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely a tip for me, or, or from me at least. But what I would definitely, what I would definitely advise a young woman to do is, is first figure out what it is that you want to do. Where do you see yourself in 10 years time? It's one of the questions I absolutely despise. But it is something that you need to consider, you know, when, when trying to make this decision. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And higher education is a really big investment, both, you know, financial and, and time wise. So yeah. definitely don't want to go get a degree like that unless you're really interested in it and really passionate about the subject matter. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, the thing is, as well, you know, I think in, in some settings, you know, people don't necessarily have four to six years to spend on, on getting degrees just for okay. people to, to kind of understand what they're saying and, and kind of have validation behind them. So, I mean, if, if you had to go along and get some of the certifications that some of the different vendors offer and, you know, you're working towards some form of an accolade, even if it isn't necessarily MVP, but that you're a trusted um, executor on whatever technology you're working on, that, that goes a very long way. If you can say that somebody like Microsoft or UiPath or Nintex or AWS, you know, they, they say that I'm certified to be a solution architect. That goes a long way too. That's great, actually. I think that's a great like halfway solution. So I would say your general tip then is focus on certification so yeah. that kind of you're more trusted in the environment you work in. And if you really want to go the higher education route, like more power to you, but also be prepared to spend four to six years on this. Yeah, precisely. Okay. Because the thing is, as well, with with uh, if you're going into management and that kind of stuff, a lot of the positions, especially this side of the world, you yeah. do need some form of, of a certification like an MBA to be able to to be considered for that position. That's very interesting. Yeah. So actually, on on this topic potentially, um, before you had the PhD, did you mm -hmm. feel like, or I, you know, PhD student at least by your name, did you, did you feel like anytime you had an idea, it needed to be validated by someone who was older than you? Uh, has that changed at all as you've kind of progressed through this journey? Definitely. Um, it's it's something that actually aggravated me quite a bit uh, just before I'd, I'd ended up in the role that I'm currently in. So, you know, I'd say something and I'd give some advice and I'd give recommendations because that's that's my job, right? I mean, when I'm walking into a client's environment and I'm expected to do a technical audit on the environment and I'm giving recommendations and I'm kind of criticizing the technology they're using or at least how they're using it. Uh, it needs to be backed up a little bit by fact. So, you know, you'd go into the environment, you'd, you'd give them the recommendations, give them what it is that they want or maybe don't want to hear, have the facts backed up, and they'd still take three to six months to validate it from different people and different organizations and those kinds of things. Sure. And, and realistically, you know, if, you, if you've worked that long to kind of get the experience and, and you've now got the facts behind you and it's proven and, you know, that kind of stuff, and, and they still take three to six months to to kind of make the decisions and get those those opinions validated by the different um let's say technology vendors in question that that kind of that kind of 
creates a little bit of animosity, especially because a lot can happen in our industry in three to six months. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's something that, that I'd faced and, and it was something that actually, you know, wasn't great to deal with. But sometimes you just kind of have to move on and, and take it on the cheek. And, you know, when they come back six months later and say you were right, then, you know, that that's kind of enough. Right. So and, and kind of that automatically comes with, you know, your your opinion, your, your findings and your, your experience has been validated. Um, so so going forward, it's it's not as much of an issue, but you will still run into challenges. That makes a lot of sense. Um when you go, I guess, into client sites or even even at work, do you worry about you know being branded potentially as flirty, depending on how you act? Maybe if you're nice to people, are you always like on your guard to make sure that that doesn't happen? Yeah, definitely. I think it's a big thing. Um, you know, you've always got to kind of be be cognizant of what are you wearing? Is it work appropriate? Um, is it is somebody going to see you in the corporate setting as being too casual? Are you going to have dressed up to such an extent where you're overdressed for the occasion? Um, and and sometimes that sends some some strange and mixed messages. Uh, even you know when you're when you're going to team functions and there's some team building happening and you know everybody goes out for drinks afterwards, you're always trying to. I mean, I found specifically you know uh, I don't really drink in those kinds of settings I uh, stay away from alcohol those kinds of things to to make sure that there's no um you know ulterior motives or any messages that are going to come out that could be a little bit um you know questionable and I don't think it's like that for everybody I mean certainly some of my colleagues uh, have a very different take on it but I am that I find that is definitely something that I'm very cognizant of uh you know making sure that I'm not sending out any strange strange messages that makes a lot of sense um, do you ever, I guess, like change the way you would have dressed? So maybe there's a work function and you would have loved to wear something, but your first thought is, oh no, I, you know, I can't wear this. I have to change to something else. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think sometimes it's, it, it would be so much easier if I could just chuck on a suit and, and there you go. Um, but yeah. yeah, I think, you know, there's been a lot of times, especially because, uh, the working environment that, that I'm kind of used to is, is very casual. Yeah. Um, so, you know, having to, having to be like, okay, well, you know, we've got a function, I'm going to be seeing a client later. So, you know, maybe let's not go as casual as we'd like, or, you know, depending on the different clients that you have, you have to dress in a certain way as well. So that definitely does, does add to it. Um, and I've definitely found myself in a situation where I've changed my out outfit multiple times because it might be suitable for one meeting, but not necessarily for the next. Oh my gosh, that's so frustrating. Yeah, um, yes. <laughs> and then do you, do you ever wonder, I guess, or, or try to tailor your maybe like makeup and outfit to try to make you look older so that people will take you more seriously? Yeah, definitely. I'm not, I'm not somebody who enjoys wearing makeup very much, but when when I feel like there's a little bit of intimidation that might be coming in, that coming, that's the first place where I generally, you know, crack up the eyeliner. <laughs> right, exactly. Me too. You know, I had this uh, this experience the other day. I, I, I don't turn on my camera a lot at work, mostly because I like to sit in my pajamas because I work yeah. long hours and, exactly. you know, I don't, I just want to look however I want and be, you know, eating while I'm working and all of that stuff. But I, I turned on my camera for a meeting. And the first reaction I got was, wow, I always forget how young you look. Uh, how does one react to that? I was <laughs> like, oh, you know, thanks. I'm sure I'll appreciate this in 10 years kind of thing. Yeah. It's, it's uncomfortable. It is. Uh, it's not that, like, I understand, but it's it's not the kind of reaction I really want when I turn on my camera. That's exactly why I don't want to turn on my camera. Exactly, exactly. I even get that in 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 face to face meetings. So yeah. I was. It actually happened today, quite ironically. So we've been uh, doing some interviews with some graduates from university uh, to enter our graduate program at work. Now living on both sides of the fence, you know, that's 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 it's an interesting place to be. And uh, one of the people who who had joined the interview, which was actually in person, had uh, said to me, "Well, you know, it, 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 take this the way that it comes, but." I'm battling to see how you're a lecturer at a university when you should actually still be a student. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, PhD, that kind of counts, right? But I mean, if you mean like sitting in the class, that, that that's that's a bit extreme. So I, I get it, but also I don't. So that <laughs> I laughed it off, but it, it was also quite interesting, you know, to your point where people are like, okay, but you're you're a little bit young for this. Right. Um yeah how I guess we should probably come up with some tips for how to deal with these things because I'm sure we're not the only ones um so I guess what would you suggest to to other people who and and you know this doesn't happen to just women I mean this happens to men all the time too you yeah. know who look younger and and they get branded as like a baby face which is exactly. not 
you know, it's, it's not great for them either. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, for us, we have tools like we can wear makeup and we can change the way we look to try to look older. But for them, there's not that much they could do. Yeah, exactly. Unless they wear a hat, I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I think the the tips aspect is actually, it's quite important. I mean, we 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 had a a bit of a situation at work um, not too long ago. Uh, I've got a team underneath me and and one of the ladies, um, she's actually, she's also just come out of our graduate program. She's very, very bright brilliant young lady and uh, we we got into a, a bit of a situation where um, somebody had actually taken us on about uh, you know the way that we were working and and we were, we're we're very constructive in the way that we work in the sense that if somebody isn't doing something that we don't like we're going to say it right because when you're working with clients there's a certain etiquette that needs to be upheld and I'm the kind of person I don't care who you are I don't care what your age is if it's not right and we're jeopardizing our relationship with the clients I'm going to tell you and that's exactly what happened you know we, we raised the issue that that was kind of displeasing to all of us and um the person in question then turned around and was like yeah well who are you to tell me you know what I should and shouldn't do I've been doing this for a very long time for longer than you've been born those kinds of things and and that was actually you know where the, the it, it kind of hit me in the face that we do need to start developing you know techniques and, and tips to work with this